Now that TwoFlow has finished running, we'll go back to our TwoFlow road flow panel and select read results. And you'll see that immediately the arrows have disappeared. What's happened is 12D has returned us to the default depth and water level settings. To see these settings reflected in our controller, we'll select on two flow results, hit enter, and you can see we're definitely once again on the last time step, which shows the maximum of all result results for the whole run. And we're looking at water levels in a tin inquire, and the contours will represent the result depth. To turn on these contours, we'll go up to our toggle button, and we'll toggle on our tin contours. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see that the water's coming down, and it's essentially piling up behind our barrier here. To take a look at that in the 3D view, go to our 3D perspective view. We'll zoom in a bit, and you can see the same thing. These dark red colors indicate the greater depths where the water is ponding up behind the barrier. There is no flow going over top, and then the water accumulates once again down below. And do recall that 12D is currently not showing any results less than 2 millimeters. To see this on our long section view, we'll go to our cross section, pardon me, our long section, and we'll go to the plus button and add on our TFZ line ridge. This is the one that we created earlier at elevation 89.5. That's going to create the barrier. To see the results that are in our TF results grid tin model, We'll go back up to the plus sign, press the lowercase t, and add on our results grid tin. So this is definitely not overtopping that level. You can see the water is just ponding up a small amount, and then it goes back down to the minimum depth as the rainfall on grid accumulates farther down the project.